All right, welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. Boy, I would I want to adjust this camera still, but enough of that. Let's get into this. So we just got finished listening to and watching the Vibes Cartel Privy Council first day of hearing. Remember, it's two days, and that means it's today, the 14th, which is Valentine's Day, and tomorrow will be the 15th, which is what the Privy Council said it will be. There's some information here that I would like to give to you so you understand what's going on, and then we're going to talk about what we witnessed or saw today. This, this, um, freedom is looking very possible. Freedom is looking very possible. Keep your fingers crossed. There were a lot of hiccups and mistakes made. There were a lot of uh, law jargon and stuff that the average person wouldn't understand in this hearing at the Privy Council, but we're not attorneys. And worse, we're not British attorneys and we don't have that thick British accent. So you really have to stress the listening for the most part to actually hear. Let's get into it. So, first of all, the link to watch it live for those who don't know will be posted as the first comment on this page and it will leave the link. So just click the link and go watch it like the rest of us. If you didn't miss it, if you didn't watch it today, watch it tomorrow. Right? Um, at the Privy Council site, it says that Sean Campbell and three other appellants versus the king, they are listed as appellants. The king is listed as a respondent. Number two says Jamaica. And then there is information here where they basically give you the breakdown of what the case is at the Privy Council level. We have our whole thing already about where we've been talking about. But you need to know what's going to be argued in front of the Privy Council. So it goes like this. Issue. This is the issue. On the 13th of March 2014, the appellants were convicted of the murder of Clive Blizzard Williams. The issue is that this appeal is whether their convictions are safe in light of the following grounds of challenge. One, should the trial judge have excluded the telecommunication evidence relied on by the prosecution. That's one. Two, how should the judge have handled the allegations that there were attempts to bribe jury members during the trial? Should the jury or the particular juror said to have offered the bribe have been discharged? That part. Stick around for that. Three, was the judge wrong to invite the jury to reach a verdict late in the day, even given the special circumstances of this case. Now, it goes on further to say that these are the facts. After trial that lasted 64 days before the trial judge and a jury in the home circuit court in Kingston, Jamaica, the appellants were convicted of Mr. Williams' murder. The prosecution's case was that the appellants murdered Mr. Williams on the 16th of August 2011 after he failed to return two licensed firearms which the second appellant, Mr. Palmer, had given him for safekeeping. Sean Storm is listed as the first appellant, not Vibes Cartel. Mr. Palmer had given him for safekeeping. Now, Mr. Williams was not seen or heard from after that date and his body has never been found. The police took the, appell took the appellants into custody on the 30th of September 11th, on the 30th September 2011, and seized their cell phones. The prosecution relied heavily on evidence that was derived from these cell phones, which was taken from a copy of an SD-ROM provided by Digicel, a telecommunication provider in Jamaica. In response to the police request, at the trial, the appellants challenged the admissibility of this telecommunications evidence. They argued that the police request to Digicel and Digicel's provision of data to the police were actually carried out in breach of the Interception of Communication Act. You can go look up what that is. Further, the evidence had been obtained in breach of the fundamental rights to the protection of privacy of communication that was guaranteed by the Chapter of Fundamental Rights and Freedom obtained in the Jamaican Constitution. However, the trial judge ruled that the telecommunications evidence was still admissible even though it violated 
multiple rules within the Constitution. Now, during the trial, the judge became aware of an allegation that a juror had attempted to bribe others by offering them 500,000 Jamaican dollars for a particular outcome. After investigating the allegations and considering it with counsel for both the prosecution and the defense, the judge decided that the trial should proceed with the same juror sitting on the trial all throughout the trial. That juror was not dismissed and replaced. That jury pool was not said to be tainted. So uh, we'll talk about that later. Let me finish read this from the Privy Council site for you. It says that he did not discharge the jury or the particular juror said to have offered the bribes. The judge finished his summary at 3.42 p.m. on the 13th of March, 2014. The judge returned at 5.35. Remember, he finished at 3.42. He returned at 5.35 when the forewoman told the judge that the jury had not reached a unanimous verdict. The forewoman of the jury told the judge, Your Honor, we have not reached a unanimous verdict. The judge sent the jury out again. At 6.08 p.m., the jury returned and by a majority of 10 to 1, convicted the appellant of the murder of Mr. Williams. The Court of Appeal dismissed the appellant's appeal against conviction and the appellant now appeal to His Majesty in Council. That means it was dismissed in Jamaica at their level so they appealed to His Majesty and Council, which is the Privy Council, to a higher level. The appellants are Sean Campbell, listed as the first one. Then there's Adija Palmer, which is Vibes Cartel. Kahira Jones and Andre St. John, those four guys. And the respondent is listed as the king. When the queen was alive, it was the queen's council. Now that the queen has passed and it's the king, it's the king's council. Even the lawyers are referred to now as King's Council instead of Queen's Council. Just a basic understanding. So, appeal. The justices who are seeing this is Lord Reed, Lord Lloyd Jones, Lord Briggs, Lord Burroughs, and Lady Simler. The hearing date, February 14, 2024. Hearing finish date listed, February 15th. 2024 there is a disclaimer on the site that says anything that you see on this site watching it live here here's the note it says every effort is being made to provide a satisfactory streaming of jcpc judgments and hearings however these services may be subject to technical issues or delays in which case we will attempt to resolve them as soon as possible. We will provide regular updates on any issue. The footage is made available for the sole purpose of the fair and accurate reporting of the judicial proceedings of the JCPC. That means they have nothing to hide and they want the world to see it and they air it out right in front of the world, which is how I think every court case should be done, but hopefully we'll get there in the future. They also said, although you are welcome to view this, these proceedings, the reuse, the capture, the re-editing, or the redistribution of this footage in any form is not permitted. You should be aware that any such use could attract liability for breach of copyright or defamation, and in some circumstances, could constitute a contempt of court. So please don't ask me to videotape anything and share it on the channel. They give a clear warning that we should not do it and that this is not the thing to do because we can be sued. They will have you up in court, liability issues, copyright infringement issues, defamation issues, because you were warned. So take it from me. now. Watching this whole Vice Cartel suck me up, boy. This is what I came away with. It went like this. Whatever JS2 is, they talked about that a lot. Text messages between Chow, Campbell, Cartel, Lizard, and Lizard girlfriend were also brought up in there. 
It is also said that they could see the conversation where Campbell and Cartel and Chow and Lizard were talking. And then they saw the conversation where Lizard and his girlfriend were talking and all these conversations ran concurrently like around the same time they were happening. And then they said, following further, they saw where there was still communication between Cartel and Campbell, which is Sean Storm, but there was no longer any communication coming from Lizard's device. All right. So, and from that day forward, there has been no communication coming from Lizard's device. Now, is there metadata that puts Lizard in their company? You know, like in um, the case where the police officer, Jamia Kadeh, with, I can't remember her name right now, the young lady, say her name, Donnelly Donaldson. Yeah, in Donnelly Donaldson case, when Donnelly Donaldson cell phone stopped working, dropped off the network, you could say somebody killed her right there and smashed her phone. It dropped off of the network, right? When it did, there is metadata that shows that the person who they are charging now for it, our police boyfriend, his cell phone was right there with her cell phone. It's not the same case in this case with Vibes Cartel's case. Now, outlined, they said what would happen. This is what he said. He said in those, this is why the case went to trial because judging from their phone conversations, they talked about being violated in some way as in the shoes not being returned, something. They said and outlined what would happen and then he disappeared and then there is message saying what happened. Now, I must say to people like this, somebody said yesterday, I was at the trial. You know, most people weren't allowed to, but Cartel was their worst, his worst enemy because they actually said what they did and said what would happen if somebody violate them and all that. I give it to you like this. That is called circumstantial evidence and that is not proof of murder. For instance, if me and you are warring today, I'm going to say, you know, said so that boy, the John John, me I chop him up. Me I chop up him blood clot. Yo, me I shot him in his face. Me I chop him up. Me I bury that when nobody can find him. If I said that today, and me and you are war publicly today, and I said that today, and you went missing tomorrow, of course the police would have reasonable suspicion to come to me and say, but you and John John did a war, man. And people hear you say, how oh, you going to shoot him in the face and chop him up and bury him somewhere where nobody can find him. So Flo, where is he? Did you do something to him? You understand? But that doesn't mean I actually did. John John could very well be in something similar with somebody else who actually kill him for real and bury him somewhere else for real. So it is the burden of proof is on the prosecution. If they are going to take my statement and say, yes, it's so flow kill him because the day before him said, him went missing. So flow said, he's going to shot him in his face, chop him up and bury him, carry him to court. All right. See you in court. When we get to court, how are you going to prove that I actually carried out what I said? Exactly. There has to be further evidence linking that. So that alone, that cell phone talk conversation alone was not enough. Now remember the metadata information by the digital specialist that flew into Jamaica independent party already deemed that that metadata information, that tech, that conversation, he said, Vibes Cartel would have only have been a profit. If, or must have been a profit if he was to because it was done way ahead of the time frame of which lizard went missing right so that conversation although you could fit it in there and use it as some kind of circumstantial evidence it doesn't fit the time frame because it was done before anyways speech impediment i'm watching the case and i'm looking at the lawyer talking right and he has a speech impediment. He does a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of um, 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 and he drink. he's drinking water, which is making me nervous. I don't know if he has a stutter, but this is not Jamaica. This is the UK and they're pretty advanced when it comes to these kind of things, right? So, and they're not prejudicial to towards people who have um, 
abnormalities, if you will, then. Like you speak with a stutter. You could still be an attorney, right? So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, damn, he's stuttering heavy. He's starting out slow. And I hope he does not, I hope this does not hinder him from getting to the point and making the point clear to the Privy Council um, judges that are sitting there. I was nervous. I was nervous. He started out as if, you know, uh, eh, 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 but then he became more, more eloquent in his speech as it went along. His assistant, his assistant, the uh, Indian looking guy that sits right next to him, his assistant was on point. His assistant was paying attention. You could see his eyes working. And as soon as the man said certain things, he had it right there, passed the files to him, kind of thing. You could tell they are well rehearsed and well put their case together. And this is going to be a stiff argument for from both sides. No, or from their side, rather. Now, this is why you need lawyers. Because most of the two, three hours that they sat there, they, they started this at 5.30 a.m. It's 8.40 now, and it just done. And he told them in the beginning, he said, um, I'm going to be speaking for about three hours, three hours and 15 minutes, something like that. And he actually did. Pretty interesting. This is why you need lawyers, because most of that, 90% of that stuff that he was talking about was called law jargon. Stuff that most of us would understand. I hope they get to the more... Uh, layman's term stuff tomorrow we'll see there was talks of a retrial even though he stated that this isn't what we would be going for but at worst case scenario there should have been a call for a retrial um or could be a call for a retrial there are talks about how no evidence exists that links all these guys to this case Cahira St. John Sean Storm all of them there's no evidence that says they participated in a murder right there's evidence that says they had a phone conversation that sounded a certain kind of way there's no evidence that says they participated in a murder and I've said this for years they dragged those guys in based on the fact that they are closely associated with Wives Cartel not the fact that they found anything linking them to a murder and committing a murder Right? Matter of fact, it was never proven that Lizard is dead or was murdered. But, again, I want to see how they're going to weigh this up in Jamaica. And I'm waiting to see how the Donnelly Donaldson case turn out. Because Noel Maitland can't get anything less than what they gave Vibes Cartel. Because it's the same kind of situation, round and round. Right? Nobody was ever found. He is not pleading guilty. He is maintaining his innocence. Same exact kind of scenario. So let's see how that goes. Now... Talking about jury tampering and how Jamaica handled it versus how it should have been handled was the highlight of this case today. Forget the tampered evidence what we always are telling about. You know, I'm always telling you all about in any other country, this or first world country, this would have been thrown out. The very fact that a police officer, a uniformed officer, went into the evidence room, took out a piece of evidence, took it home with him, used it for his personal use, brought it back and then submitted it back to evidence and the judge still accepted it and used, largely used that part, that evidence, that cell phone to convict these guys and give them a life sentence, that case would have been thrown out a long time ago. But forget that part. This part was the main focus today, the big highlight today. And I didn't really realize that until now. That's why I said listen closely because I'm sure things are going to be revealed that all of us did not know or never paid attention to from before. Watch this. When you have a case, right, and the case is tainted as in there's a juror that is tainting the jury pool, one of the jurors in there will say, yo, I'll pay you $500,000 if you say he's not guilty or I'll pay you $500,000 if you say he is guilty, whatever. They're trying to perverse the course of justice by paying off the other jury members to come to a kind of decision based on what they want them to do, right? It was said that it was brought to the judge's attention in Vibes Cartel case that there was a juror in there that was doing that. In a case like this, what they usually do is they usually get rid of that particular juror or and replace them with somebody else or they get rid of that entire jury pool because it's now tainted 
and bring in a fresh new set of people to serve. In this case, they kept the same person on the jury for the whole time. Now get this, this is the kicker. They kept him there for the whole time until the case done. He was a part of making the decision for Vibes Cartel to be sentenced to life or for Vibes Cartel to be free. No wonder it ended up 10 to 1. 10 decided, yes, send them to prison. One person held out. It was a 10 to 1 decision, right, in the case. Check this out. After that was done, the same juror was put on trial for the same offense and was found guilty and was given prison time. So if he was so guilty that he was found guilty and given prison time after the case was done, why was he left on the jury, on the jury for the whole case? He should have been taken off or that jury pool should have been done away with. You see what I'm saying? So there is just more mess and frigory that went on in this trial than anything else. Now tomorrow we'll stay close to it to see what's going on. Don't forget, click the link down here. I said I was going to go live, but it's very impossible to go live because it's impossible to listen to them, hear everything they're saying, and then relay it back to you like I'm doing now. I'm actually listening and taking notes. You understand? So permit me to do that and then join tomorrow when we go right back into this for this to start again i'm guessing it's going to start the same time it started today 5 30 a.m um standard eastern eastern standard time so I look forward to it starting tomorrow about the same time again i'm still saying free vibes cartel and demand them and i still believe and now i believe that they will be free let's see i hope i hope i hope it is a turnover if you have anything different to say Put your comments in the comment section below. No need to be disrespectful. It is what it is. We have a difference of opinions, but we can still share mutual respect. I'm out. Peace.